Welcome back guys to Phoenix Wright Dual Destinies as the Cosmic Tournament has begun without any investigation for Apollo and Athena who take on the defense of Solomon Starbuck, the friend and mentor of Clay Terran, best friend in fact, to Apollo Justice himself as Blackwell stands opposite us, very serious about this case, we know how it will end as Candice Arm has looked over the bombings before the bombing of courtroom number 5. But where will this case lead us? What will it uncover? As Apollo has always felt there is something bigger hanging over the bombing case to begin with. So let's re-examine those days. As we now find out, how exactly did they determine that Clay was already gone on that footage? Ah, I see what you mean. Whether Clay was still alive at that point is pretty crucial. Your Honor, please take another look at the footage. Isn't it possible that Mr. Terran was still alive here and that Mr. Starbuck was helping him? Why? I believe you're right. One man carrying the other to safety. What a beautiful expression of friendship. Silence. <laughs> Perhaps that's what it looks like to a one-eyed hothead and a dotard. But it only makes sense if it's the victim's dead body. What do you mean? Fulbright. Explain it to Justice Dono. You got it! Ready, kid? If the murder had occurred in the lounge, someone could have spotted it. Anyone could enter the lounge after all. But doing it while they were alone in the spaceship, that's a horse of a different color. Objection! But you can't deny it, there's a possibility the murder could have happened in the lounge. All that video shows is the man helping his fellow astronaut out. Silence. Your assertion is based on emotion. It's based on your belief that Mr. Starbuck would surely help his own disciple. But you have no logical explanation as to why the victim could still be alive. Ah. Unfortunately, Mr. Justice, the prosecution is right. Your argument is lacking in sound logic. But it sounded perfectly logical to me. Well, Mr. Justice, if you have no further objections, I believe it's time to bring this cross-examination to a close. Objections? Well, I, uh... Your Honor, the defense requests a little time to think and regroup. Hmm. Uh, given the facts, I'm not sure I see the need. What's it, Fina? It's just... Uh, there's something that's been bothering me. Hmm. If it isn't the defense stalling for time, as always. Very well. I'm feeling generous. You may have a small measure of time. Yes. You have... Five seconds. Five seconds?! After that, I declare this cross-examination to be closed and a verdict to be rendered. Your boldness. Raise your gavel high. It's time for a countdown. Oh! Oh! Ready? We didn't have time! Spit out, Athena! Only three more seconds! Ah. Look, look! I don't think the prosecution's explanation is very complete. Meaning? Meaning there's something missing. Like they conveniently left it unexplained? Something they didn't explain? Something they didn't explain? Ah! You're right! I think I know what you're talking about! Your five seconds are up, Mr. Justice. Is there anything about the prosecution's argument that you'd like to rebut? Yes, Your Honor. Actually, there is. There's something the prosecution has yet to make clear to this court. Hmm. Well, if you put it that way... What is it that the prosecution has failed to explain? The motive for the murder? Yes, they actually haven't explained that. Why the body was moved? They haven't explained both. But if you look at the two choices of 50-50... Anyway, if you were just not going to examine it, you wouldn't. So why am I going with this conversation line? Because technically, the motive for the murder is something for the prosecution to establish. It's not something for the defense to establish. The prosecution haven't necessarily established it, so that is a bad thing. Why the body was moved is actually a really solid point. Because if the body is dead, why do you need to move it if that is your end goal? You just leave it in with the explosion and the burning? The only reason you'd move it is to protect or preserve, most likely life. 
So, you know, if the if the murder scene was supposed to be the spaceship, why did you move the body? He had failed to explain why Mr. Starbuck would bother bringing the body back at all. If the defendant wanted to kill the victim, why didn't he just leave his body in the rocket? Why go through the trouble of bringing him all the way back to the boarding lounge? Oh, that's true. I don't think we've heard the prosecution's thoughts on that yet. That's because they have none, Your Honor. After all, how does one explain something so illogical? The prosecution is claiming that the defendant moved the victim's dead body. But what if the entire premise of that argument is wrong? Then let's hear your theory, Mr. Justice. The defense proposes that the defendant didn't kill the victim. He was helping him. Ah! Fulbright, explain it for our sad friend here before I nod off to his monotone monologue. Informing exactly why Space Boy moved the victim. Huh? They've got to be joking! It's simple! Mr. Starbuck did what he did to direct suspicion away from himself! He wanted to create the impression he heroically risked his life to save his partner! That's why he made sure to make it to the security camera so there'd be a record! At the very least, he appears to have achieved success with you and the old man. Ah. One man carrying the other to safety! What a beautiful expression of friendship! The average person wearing a spacesuit weighs easily over 200 pounds. Saving the life of a partner who weighs as much while trying to escape deadly frames. What a dramatic sob story fit for the silver screen. And a dead weight at that. Indeed! I was completely taken in by the humanity of the story! You see, yet the true ending is that all traces of his hammy act were meant to be blown up. Yes, and now we arrive at the thrilling conclusion. The third explosion. Objection! What are you talking about? There was no third explosion! Silence! Indeed, you are correct. But that is thanks to Detective Arm. It was she who identified and secured the bomb. However, it doesn't change the fact that the third bomb was discovered in the lounge. A steel coffin beside the witness stand. That would be a bomb transport case. We use that to transport the deactivated bomb here. It was found in the lounge. A bomb in the form of a most distasteful toy. What? One on the second floor of the main building, one on the launch pad, and one in the lounge. The defendant planned to set off three firework displays. Fortunately, the third was discovered before it could be detonated, for had it not, the victim's body and other vital evidence would surely have been immolated. Objection! Ah! Before you utter a word, I know that the evidence supports me. Ah. It's like he's reading my mind. As it is still undergoing forensic investigation, I do not have the evidence on hand. However, I know that a peculiar item was found in one of Mr. Starbuck's pockets. Specifically, a bomb detonation switch. You found what? I suspect the defendant had no time to destroy such damning evidence. When the Space Center director and detective arm stumbled across the murder, so he fought to hide it in his pocket. Feeble brain that he is. Ah! No! Mr. Starbuck would never do anything like that! Ah! Why? Justice Dono, open your eyes and see the truth. Um, it appears to be irrefutable evidence that the accused set off the explosions. No, there has to be some kind of mistake. This can't be the truth. Still can't accept it? You'll believe in your client, come what may. Then why don't you cross-examine the defendant himself? This has got to be a trap. It's like Blackwell's controlling the entire game. Yeah, it seemed like he was waiting for me to bring up the body moving issue. Why do you say that? 
because he had just the right argument when I pointed out. And to really rub it in, he had a decisive piece of evidence up his sleeve too. He was trying to shake my faith in Mr. Starbuck and break me down. And making you cross-examine Mr. Starbuck at this point was part of his plan too. Totally underhanded, but I wouldn't expect anything less from him. Now let us hear from the arch-villain, the fiendish murderer himself. Famed astronaut, Solomon Starbuck. Oh, witness, your name and occupation, please. Solomon Starbuck, astronaut. <sighs> How'd this happen? Mr. Starbuck, you aren't looking very well. Will you be able to give testimony? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> That's a weird sigh, man. Well, unfortunately, a no is not an option. You are being accused of the Space Center bombing and the murder of Clay Terran. Please testify to these allegations. Uh, so, do so you think it makes me want to yawn? It sucks. Um, mind if I take this two off? It's getting really heavy. Silence. It's not the weight of the suit that you feel, but of your sins. Prepare to carry that weight for the rest of your life. Banish me to the moon. I don't care anymore. Wow, that was super negative. Is he going to be alright up there? <laughs> He'll be fine. I think. As long as he doesn't totally give up and say he did it, that is. Right, so you didn't kill him. That's a good start. All I did was support Clay over my shoulder and get us out of the rocket. Like always, I took the elevator down to the middle level and headed for the corridor. Clay had passed out by the time we got the order to evacuate. I didn't kill Clay. I was trying to save him. Hmm. You assert you didn't set off the bomb to murder the victim? <laughs> but I bet you think I'm lying, right? I reserve all judgment until after I've heard your full testimony. <sighs> I'm sure you don't believe me. I bet you don't even believe I'm an astronaut. I don't think the judge doubts that. Who wears a suit like that except an astronaut? Cosplayer? Just saying, cosplay could be the murder. Those cosplayers, always willing to dress up at things that are different people. They could be murdering everyone and we never know! Obviously, that's a bit of a conspiracy theory. But that's something that the judge would buy into. Really easily. That flip-flop cosplayers? Hmm. I will say that when I saw you in that movie, you appeared quite courageous. Though I suppose reality never quite lives up to fantasy. Don't meet your heroes. <sighs> I guess I'm just a big disappointment. <laughs> I really don't care whams anymore. <laughs> oh no, he's completely given up. <laughs> what a depressing fellow. If you were to join me in the clink, I imagine that annoying sighing of yours would rub off on the other inmates. Like how it rubbed off from Prosecutor Blackwell a second ago? Huh? That was Blackwell sign. Mr. Starbuck's testimony contains a glaring contradiction. The question is, what does it mean? Even if Mr. Starbuck is my client, I can't be gun-shy now. It's time to find out the truth. And that makes me realise I was just reading the text, and I did not see any glaring problem with the testimony. I was just reading. So let's look in depth. All I did was support Clay over my shoulder and get us out of the rocket. That seems like a fine statement. Hold it! So, what you're saying is that the victim was still alive at that time? Of course! He was alive and well! Silence! If so, then you admit you took a man who was alive and well and silenced him permanently with this? What? No! Ah! Black hole confirmed! Dead ahead! Ah! It's all good, Captain! I'm getting sucked in! Objection! Mr. Starbuck, you are not in space! Please give your testimony seriously! 
What's their space like? They got black holes near it. <laughs> it, it was just nerves. But maybe I shouldn't have said he was alive and well. It was more like he was slumped over. Those are completely opposite ends of the spectrum! Like always, I took the elevator down to the middle level and headed for the corridor. Okay. Is there anything in this state? Hold it. Is that the elevator inside the launch pad area? That's right. We always use it to get to and from the cockpit. That makes sense. So he was just using the route he always used. In spite of the fact that there had just been an explosion. Huh? I think Mr. Starbuck is hiding something. Something pretty big. Okay. So there's definitely something on that statement then. Wasn't the elevators out of power? The explosion sparked a fire on the second floor of the main building in the middle level of the launch pad near the elevator. Ah, no, nope, different thing. So, what it was is there was a fire there so you couldn't possibly use the elevator. The bombing report is the answer. Objection! Mr. Starbuck, I need your testimony to be as accurate as possible. M was I not being accurate? No, because it's impossible for you to have taken the elevator down to the middle level. What makes you say that, Mr. Justice? Please recall where the bomb went off in Launchpad 1. Also recall that after the explosion, the middle level elevator was engulfed in flames. Oh, you're right. Which means... Exactly. The launch pad's ele elevator would have been unusable. In other words... Mr. Starbuck, your statement is decidedly inconsistent with the facts. What's with the helmet? Ah! Mission Command! Mission Command! Do you read me? Come in, please! Objection! This is Mission Command. I order you to pay attention! Stop this nonsense and answer my questions, Mr. Starbuck. Ah! Mom, my helmet! Ah! I'm leaking oxygen! Ah, oxygen tank! Oxygen concentration and body temperature declining! Requesting medical assistance! <laughs> Mr. Starbuck, we are not in space right now. Please stop pretending you have lost consciousness and stand back up. I, I apologize, Your Honor. I forgot I was still on Earth. I feel like we all just got a real glimpse of Solomon Starbuck the astronaut. Yeah, he seemed more like an astronaut now than when he was doing all that sighing. Mr. Starbuck, could you please explain the inconsistency in your statement? About how you used the middle level elevator? I, uh, was nervous. Uh, I said the wrong thing. I'm sorry. I actually, uh, took a different route. I think. A different route? I hope you're able to deliver a straight story this time. Uh, I, I, I'll get right. It is right this time. Maybe. No. Uh, I mean, probably. Probably. It's understandable to be nervous, but let me remind you, accuracy is paramount in court. So is this a take two? No, this is a new testimony about its escape route. Let's see, uh, my escape route, uh, what I said before was a mistake. I, uh, I remember now. I took a different route. Maybe? Probably. With the capsule and clay in my arms, I made my way down from the upper level. Okay. So you're saying you escaped without using the elevator? That's right. There's a ladder that spans the upper and middle levels. I used that ladder to get to the middle level. Luckily, the fire hadn't reached the ladder, so we could make our escape that way. And the capsule you mentioned. I suppose you mean the thing next to Mr. Terran here. Was the capsule that important that you'd risk your life to take with you? It almost goes without saying, but yeah. That capsule contains asteroid samples. Therefore, it's invaluable as research material. With his spacesuit on, Clay weighed a ton. But securing the capsule was also important. I need you to answer to the best of your ability. 
Mr. Starbuck, please remember that your verdict is riding on your testimony. <laughs> Maybe I am guilty after all. I wonder if you can see the stars in prison. Bet it's more comfortable than a spaceship. Probably is. To be fair. So it's time to cross-examine him properly. Let's see, uh, my escape route. Why said before was a mistake. That doesn't look like I could press that to get any actual information from him. But we'll do it anyway. Hold it! How could you mistake such a basic fact? Hey, everybody makes mistakes. But try thinking about the vastness of space instead. From Earth, it takes four light years to travel to our nearest neighboring star. So you see, compared to the vast expanse of space, human error is insignificant. I wish he'd consider it just a little more significant than zero. Enough jabbering. Get on with your testimony. Uh. Poor guy. I, uh, I remember now. I took a different route. Maybe. Probably. Again, this one looks like I'm not going to get anything from this either. Maybe. Probably. Did I hear you right, Mr. Starbuck? I I didn't say either of the things. Ah! Mission Control, come in, please! An error has occurred in the sound system. Advent emergency tin can telephones. Oh! No! Tin can telephones are ineffective in the vacuum of space! Stop this nonsense or I will sever you and your tin can telephone. <laughs> Alright, I'm begging you. I'll tell the truth. Just don't sever anything. Apollo, is he going to be alright? I'm starting to think he's not. Uh, let's see. So, about when we were running away. <laughs> With the capsule and clay in my arms, I made my way down from the upper level. So this is the bit I'm supposed to present to, most likely. So, you made your way down from the upper level. Is there anything that can prove different? You'd have had to climb the blooming ladder. How the hell did you get down there? With him slumped on a ladder. That would make it seem like he actually made it down himself or you dropped the body. One of the two. Which means that most likely he climbed the ladder himself. Which means he was alive. Which means this is incredibly pertinent testimony, guy! Oh, it said present. Not go on. Thank you! Mr. Starbuck, why don't you just tell the truth? The, the truth? Um, I see. The earth is blue. No, 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 that's not right. So, uh, I guess the earth isn't blue? Yeah, that's it! The truth, Mr. Starbuck. Ah, the oxygen concentration is super low in this area! Ah! Fairly much the oxygen tanks! Mr. Justice, the witness appears confused. Please help draw out the truth from him. Right, Mr. Starbuck. Under circumstances at the time, you couldn't possibly have reached the boarding lounge via the upper level route. Huh? Not as long as this was along the escape route. The blooming ladder! If I could just get directly on it, I'll only present when I'm right on it. To get down from the upper to the middle level where the launch pad 1 corridor is, you would have to go down the ladder. Isn't that right, Mr. Starbuck? Uh, of course. That was the only way we could escape. Objection! But how would that work? At the time, you were supporting Mr. Terran over your shoulder, were you not? And remember, he was in full space gear as well, putting him at over 200 pounds. Ah. Oh! W w well, it's easy on the moon. Gravity is only one-sixth of what it is on Earth. Objection! But the space center is located on Earth. Short of being an octopus, climbing a ladder with an adult male in space gear in one arm while carrying the capsule in your other is impossible, wouldn't you say? Oh. So, Mr. Starbuck, how exactly did you climb down that ladder with your arms full? Ah! Mr. Starbuck, come clean and tell us the truth now. Engineer! Where's that engineer? Oxygen leak detected due to body maintenance. Evacuate immediately! What? 
that? He's flying the coop. Ah, help. I'm caught on the ceiling. Um, help. Anyone? Bailiff, prepare the cherry picker. We must launch our rescue mission at once. Well, that's one way to take off while being questioned. I'd rather prove his innocence so he can go to space again someday for real. Once he's gotten over his fears, if he does have them. Now then, Mr. Starbuck, do you think you can keep your feet planting on the ground? Yeah, I apologize for losing control. Are you ready to tell us the truth? Ah, not that! Anything but that! What is going on? This isn't the Mr. Starbuck I know. It appears Space Boy is prone to deception. Witness. Yikes! Uh, yes? I thought your story odd. But perhaps the inconsistencies can be explained as... the result of a medical side effect. Ah, 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 I'm probably going to black wheel! Please! Please don't talk about that! What are you talking about, Prosecutor Blackwell? <laughs> hmm. Didn't I already state the space boy is, ironically, terrified of going into space? That's why he took some precautions just before the launch. For you see, traces of this anti-anxiety drug were found in the system. Oh. I sense things are about to nosedive. Y you got it all wrong! I told him during the investigation too! I don't know anything about any drugs. I never took any medication, I swear. It was found in his system, but he doesn't remember taking it. How could that be? Somebody must have slipped to me. But, 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 but I guess maybe that's why I don't remember. Because of the side effects. Yeah, that's why I don't remember much about what really happened. What? Side effects? Huh? Order. Order in the court. Can't get any useful testimony out of him if he doesn't remember anything. Well, this certainly explains why his testimony kept changing. Ugh. Why didn't he just tell me he couldn't remember? Also, what anti-anxiety drug? That's a brilliant anti-anxiety drug when you think about it. Anxious about something? Don't worry! We'll wipe your memories! Can't be anxious about something if you don't remember something, he says, doing that thing where the guy's pointing his fingers at his head, Eddie Murphy. I guess he didn't want anybody to find out he was terrified of going into space as he hits the mic. <sighs> Maybe I really did do it? Which brings us to the answer of our original question. Of how the witness climbed down the ladder with a dead body. It does? Um, so what is it? A dead man feels no pain and makes no complaints, Justice Dodo. So the body was simply dropped down from the top of the ladder. Oh my! I see! And then the defendant could climb down with his free hand! Objection. Drop the body down? Who would do such a disrespectful thing? Well, a murderer would, Apollo. Besides, dropping the body down would leave marks on the body itself. But that's the real reason you should be objecting. So you are capable of quick thinking. Yes, you are correct. Really? Oh, um... Thanks. <laughs> ah! Huh? What's this? It's the oxygen tank from the victim's spacesuit. It's ruptured, and I'm sure you can figure out why. Y you can't be implying a rupture when the defendant dropped the victim's body. I am, for they fracture easily when struck. Objection! Even if that's true, the tank's explosion and shrapnel would leave its mark on the body. Yet according to the autopsy report, only the knife wound was found on the victim's body. You're clearly grasping at straws with this line of reasoning. Silence. A spacesuit isn't heavy for the sake of being heavy, Justice Dono. It includes the latest technological devices and is made of the fabric of tomorrow. This fabric is made to protect astronauts from the dangers of space. So falling a few earth yards would hardly leave a mark on the wearer. Objection! I don't think they're for falling. Should it be impossible to stab someone through it as well? Yeah, it should be impossible, yes. It should. And yet, for sheer coincidence, 
The knife slipped through a weak spot in the suit's structure and found its way to its target. Sheer coincidence. What are the chances? You forget that our killer is an astronaut himself with knowledge of how the suits work. Ah, uh, he's got me there. And now my argument has been proven. Space Boy killed the victim in the rocket and then dropped his body from the upper level. After climbing down, he shouldered the body and made sure the camera recorded them. There's no room for debate about these facts. It is clear that Solomon Starbuck is the only one who could have killed Clay Terran. Right, I'm not sure that line of reasoning sticks, but here we go with the dropping of the body. I'd expect more injury, I'd expect broken bones and limbs, but if an explosion happened relatively near him, maybe you could also explain that as the blast wave causing an injury too? I do not know. So where do we go with this from here? The only way we'll be able to find out with this crazy flashing by splash screen is tomorrow with the next episode of Dual Destinies as we continue the Cosmic Turnabout. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.